Hi, my name is Renee Rizuski. I'm a registered dietitian for our cardiac and pulmonary rehab programs. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Mediterranean diet. If I could sum up what eating healthy would be, it's really to try to stay away from foods that we know that are cheap, convenient, easy, and even what we call fake foods. Instead, choosing real whole foods, which are minimally processed, leads to better health. And the Mediterranean diet is a very good example of this type of eating. The Mediterranean diet is ranked number one for overall health, easy to follow, delicious, and also helpful for those with chronic health problems like heart disease and diabetes. There are five basic Mediterranean diet guidelines. As you can see here on this slide, um, I want to spend just a few minutes on a few of these points um, just to um, explain a little bit more about why um, you'd want to choose fresh seasonal fruits and vegetables. When we go to our grocery stores today, oftentimes the fruits and vegetables we're seeing aren't truly fresh, although they can be in season. When we talk about really fresh food, it's kind of like when you grow a garden and you go to your garden and pick that vegetable off that plant to have today to eat. When you're doing that, the vegetable has the most flavor. Of course, um, it's going to be cheaper and also going to deliver a whole lot more nutritional value um, than foods that are not allowed to ripen, that are sitting around for more than 24 hours, you lose a lot of those nutrients. In the Mediterranean countries, of course they have a beautiful climate and they grow things all year round, but they stick to eating things that are in season and picked fresh that day. If you don't have access to truly fresh vegetables, you still are gonna have nutritional benefits from eating them. You could also think about frozen vegetables. They're often the richest in nutrients because how quickly they are frozen um, after being picked. Typically, frozen vegetables are frozen within 24 hours to maintain their nutrients um, and also are picked when they're fully ripened, so the full nutrients are present at that time. The Mediterranean countries also include plenty of nuts and seeds and uh, foods like peanut butter, almond butter. They also consume more of their protein from plant foods such as chickpeas and lentils, but maybe you're more familiar with pinto beans, black beans, kidney beans. These all count as part of the legume family. They choose whole grains. You're more familiar with whole grains being like whole wheat bread, maybe um, whole grain pasta, but the Mediterranean countries really kind of focus on eating that whole grain. So for example, grains like brown rice, oatmeal, to their types of grains that we can find here in the United States like farro, quinoa, couscous, you might have heard a few of those before too. They don't eat as much pasta and bread as you think. Um, that's more of an American um, cuisine um, than it is really truly theirs. But when they do have bread and when they do have pasta, they consume them in a whole lot smaller quantities than we would if we visit an Italian restaurant or maybe when we fix dishes like spaghetti or lasagna at home. Because they live on the Mediterranean Sea and they stick with the ideas of eating what's local for them, they catch all their fish or seafood from the sea. And this is what we call wild caught seafood. There are a lot of health benefits in consuming wild caught seafood over farm raised and I'll talk about those a little bit later on. When you're at the grocery store or maybe when you're visiting a restaurant, you want to look for the tag wild caught. If you're looking at Atlantic salmon as an example, Atlantic salmon is a farm raised seafood not a uh, wild caught. Salmon only live in the Pacific Ocean. They also use plenty of herbs and spices and extra virgin olive oil to add flavor to their foods, but there are also a lot of health benefits to using herbs, whether they're fresh or they're dried. 
um, as well as extra virgin olive oil. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later on. They do consume eggs, um, and you might be surprised to know that they consume whole eggs. We don't recommend eating just egg whites anymore, and I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. When it comes to their dairy choices, um, they do fresh cheeses and yogurt in moderation, um, but again, they don't do low-fat or fat-free choices. Point number five, um, here in the United States, we consume too much added sugar through typically sweetened beverages, candy, chewing gum, that type of thing. Um, that is something they don't do a whole lot of. We know sugar is tied to increasing risk for a lot of health problems um, as well as heart disease. So we wanna try to start eliminating as much as we can from added sugars. They also don't consume refined grains like we do here in the United States. Refined grains typically refer to white colored starchy grain type of foods like white bread, lance, snack crackers, um, just as an example. They also don't consume a whole lot of processed meats. This includes things like hot dogs, deli meats, etc. Nor do they use what we call refined oils or other highly processed foods. Now, what these refined oils are, as you can see here on this slide, we talk about vegetable oil, otherwise known as polyunsaturated fats or what we call omega-6 fats. Vegetable oils today are heat treated uh, and that's to increase their smoke point so that you can cook at high temperatures with them. But unfortunately, what we are learning recently is that these oils that we once recommended as good choices for your heart health are now actually linked back to health issues. Oils like you see here, canola oil, which really is not an omega-6, it is a monounsaturated fat, but it is highly refined, so we're gonna put it in this category for now, to things like peanut oil. Eating at Chick-fil-A? Well, Chick-fil-A uses peanut oil. If you're buying that Duke's mayonnaise, they're using soybean oil. So a lot of these vegetable oils are in our food products, and the problem with them is, again, what you see here on this slide is these are oils that don't have any nutritional value because of their heat treating process. They actually are then um, considered to be rancid fats um, and they smell terrible. And the uh, companies have to add deodorants and chemicals like bleach to make them smell better, to lighten their color, to clean them. And this leaves them with no flavor at all. So these are what we refer to as refined um, vegetable oils. So as too much as, as we can, we really want to try to eliminate them or really try to learn where they are in your diet by looking at your ingredient list on your food packaging um, and avoid them as, as much as you possibly can. And we're going to talk more about the healthier oils we can use in cooking a little bit. This is our Mediterranean plate. I'm sure you've seen other iterations of this where we call it the plate method. Um, it's very similar, although in this example here, we're just kind of adding the Mediterranean foods to it. This is a great plate to use if you are trying to plan healthy meals and you wanna know what should be included in a meal, but also if you have a goal of trying to control portions because you're trying to address maybe your body weight, your cholesterol, your blood sugars, whatever it might be, this plate is gonna show you the right amount of those foods that should be included at your meals. So when you're looking at this plate, the actual size should be about nine inches. Most of our dinner plates we have today are far bigger than nine inches. If you have any paper plates in your house, that's actually what we you know, use as a reference for what a nine inch plate really looks like. So you may have that, but again, if you've bought more of the modern cookware, um, then you probably have something much bigger. So try to keep in mind um, when you're using your plate that you make half of your plate vegetables like you see here on the left, and then the other half you, you separate again into two quarter sections and put your protein in what you see here as starches or grains. 
um, on that plate. And you can round out your meal, uh, very typical for the Mediterranean countries to use fruit as a dessert um, with meals, fresh fruit typically like figs or dates. Um, and then of course, drinking lots of water is always a good idea too, to limit our sweetened beverages we might be drinking like from sweet tea or lemon. So starting with the vegetable group, um, here in the United States, we don't do a really good job at getting enough vegetables every day. So this is a minimum that you see here aiming for four cups a day. If you were making half of your plate vegetables, that actually would have two cups of vegetables. So if you did that at lunch and you did that again at dinner, you would easily achieve four cups of vegetables a day. In the Mediterranean diet, they actually consume twice that amount. So sometimes that can be too aggressive for a lot of Americans to start out with. So hopefully aiming for four cups a day would be more achievable for you. And even if you're not there, trying to at least make your lunch meal and your dinner meal maybe um, with vegetables, if you're not doing that now, would help you get on your way pretty easily. All vegetables are good. Um, of course, we've already talked about if they're fresh or they're in season, they're going to be cheaper, they're going to taste better, they're going to have more nutritional value. But it is important to keep your eye on, um, if you are buying frozen or canned vegetables, to keep your eye on the food label for sodium, possible sources of fats or sugars that can be added into our vegetables. It's always a good idea to look for low sodium canned vegetables or no salt added canned vegetables. If you already have normal canned vegetables and you're seeing how much salt is actually in a serving size, it's easy to remove about 30 or 40 percent of that sodium just by rinsing those vegetables with fresh water. Um, so again, all vegetables are good here. These are just some examples that you see that are pretty typical for um, Mediterranean countries. So talking about grains, as I said earlier, they focus more on choosing whole grains, not so much wheat bread, not so much pasta, but really eating more whole grains like you see here, bulgur, couscous, farro, rices like brown rice, wild rice, um, and even um, um, oats are included in their diet as well. There's a lot of health benefits for choosing whole grains. Whole grains are wrapped up in fiber, protein, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and healthy fat sources. When we choose the refined version of grains, all we're going to be getting is the starch, which is what turns to sugar easily after you digest it but also you don't get as many vitamins, minerals, or antioxidants because most of these um, grains are stripped of those and then they add back five um, of the vitamins and minerals um, that our government deems necessary um, to provide some of the basics. So you're losing a lot of nutrition, a lot of the health benefits if you're sticking with refined grains. In order to help you with keeping cholesterol, blood sugars, and weight down, it's important to control our portions even if we are eating oatmeal um, or some of these other true whole grains. Keeping them to about just a fourth of your plate like you saw in that slide previously is a good portion. So it allows you to enjoy that but not overdoing it. Here are some brands you can look for. Um, that are good whole grain choices. Um, if you're looking for some pasta alternatives, the Explore Cuisine, the Ancient Harvest, and there's another brand, I don't have it on this slide, it's called Bonza. Explore and Bonza are legume-based pastas, so they have a very high fiber protein content, very filling, very good for uh, cholesterol lowering and blood sugar lowering. Ancient Harvest is a wheat-free uh, grain where they use rice and quinoa. So it's a very healthy alternative with a good fiber content, low starch. Let's talk about the fats in the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is not a low fat diet. The Mediterranean diet actually is more of a moderate fat diet. And of course, most of us have been led to believe for a pretty long time 
that fat is something we should limit or maybe even avoid. We've learned a lot in the past 15 years about different types of fats and they're not all created equal. So when we're talking about fat in the Mediterranean diet, we're talking about what we call healthy fat, fats that actually are known to reduce inflammation in our body, to help reduce our cholesterol, help to keep our blood sugars under control, even lower our blood pressure, and yes, even help us with weight loss. So it is so important to make sure we are getting more of these healthy fats into our meals or even our snacks every single day. The minimum here is going to be at least seven servings a day from our fats. And you can see some of the oils we're talking about. And even though you don't think of maybe these foods as being a fat source, they're considered healthy foods with fat because they have a high fat content, even though they're not necessarily greasy or oily. And we're going to look at a slide very shortly um, on what constitutes a serving from these fats. If you're using cooking sprays at this time, I would recommend that you stop um, because that follows the time of when we used to recommend a low fat diet which the American Heart Association no longer um, supports. So we really want to use oil in a bottle. Um, and the, one of the best oils to use is going to be our olive oil or even avocado oil. Um, and I'm going to talk about why that is in the um, next few slides. But pay attention here that um, when you see on the screen how olive oil has a low smoke point, avocado has a high smoke point. What that really means is, is that if you cook at high temperatures, you're going to need an oil with a high smoke point. If you cook more at lower temperatures, then sticking with a low smoke point like olive oil will be fine. Maybe you do a little bit of both. If that's the case, then I'm going to recommend that you have one cooking oil that can be used at higher temperatures and one that can be used at lower temperatures. That's important because if you cook with organic or extra virgin olive oil at high temperatures, you're going to burn the fat. That's going to make your food taste bad, but it also introduces what we call free radicals that can cause inflammation in the body. So it's not a good thing to do over long periods of time. If you're not familiar with avocados, I really encourage you to get familiar with them. They provide so many good health benefits for us. Um, the most common ones we find in our grocery stores are their smaller brownish, blackish ones. We call them Haas avocados. You can use avocados in a lot of different ways. It really is a fruit, but a fruit that is mostly fat. Um, you can use avocados to make desserts like chocolate mousse. You can make creamy, delicious salad dressings with them. You can even um, put them in, into uh, making guacamole, which is a very popular snack choice um, for a lot of people. So I encourage you to try them. Don't be put off by their color. Of course, olives are fantastic for us to eat, but they do vary in their sodium content. So one easy way to reduce that is just to rinse them right before you throw them onto a salad perhaps, or maybe you're just snacking on some olives. Um, and the, compare different food labels. See which um, olives maybe have less sodium, um, but still go ahead and rinse them. Nuts and seeds are great, but I'm going to caution you here with um, stick with nuts that are not roasted. Roasted nuts are roasted in those vegetable oils we talked about earlier. If you like roasted nuts, because they, that does tend to make them have more of a flavor, simply roast them at home. You can get a, 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 a frying pan um, and just heat it up. You don't even need to add oil. and You can put your nuts in there and let them become nice and fragrant. And when they're fragrant, you know that they're done and let them cool down and then you can store them in an airtight container in your refrigerator and they'll last quite a while for you. When you're eating peanut butter, you really want to avoid brands like Jif, Peter Pan, Skippy, or the food brand or the food store brand like Food Lion brand peanut butter because they do have vegetable oils added to them, they do have sugar, they do have salt added to them. Instead, look for a natural peanut butter. 
And we're going to talk about fish in a little while too um, and give you some examples of good. Uh, here's a slide just giving you an idea of what a serving of oils and fats would be for some of the foods we just talked about. So remember what I said, the minimum amount per day is seven servings up to nine servings or more a day depending on our calorie needs but most people will be fine just that so monounsaturated fats these are the main fat sources of the mediterranean diet this is why we see such low rates of chronic health problems globally um, when we look at those mediterranean countries especially with heart disease diabetes cancers um, weight issues monounsaturated fats are found in higher concentrations in olives, avocados, and their oils, in nuts and seeds. But also, we do find good sources of monounsaturated fats in fish, grass-fed, pasture-raised animal meats, and wild game. Although not as high um, in those other sources, but they still do have um, some of those monounsaturated fats. If you're just buying regular chicken or regular ground beef at your grocery store that's not pasture raised or grass fed, then the monounsaturated fats really aren't present. It has a lot to do with how animals are raised as to what they're eating that affects the concentrations of this particular fat. As I was mentioning earlier, canola oil really is a monounsaturated fat, but because it's so heavily refined and devoid of any nutritional value and some of the problems we have with these um, oils increasing inflammation in the body and their link back to chronic health problems, really should avoid uh, canola oil. Monounsaturated fats contain important nutrients and antioxidants. One of the biggest healthiest compounds we know of in olive oil is called oleic acid and it is that particular type of compound in the olives or even avocados that is known to help lower bad cholesterol which we call small ldl particles also helps to improve your blood sugars after a meal by improving the um, your body's sensitivity to insulin that you're making or even taking and it can also help um, to lower blood pressure, body weight, and, and so on and so on. So this is why we talk about how fats are so important in the diet uh, because of their health benefits. So this definitely is one of those good fats. This is what you should be using to replace some of the other ones that we know are not good. So if you're using margarine, please stop using it because it doesn't have the right healthy fats. And remember what we learned about margarine. It was a source of trans fats. Trans fats are the only dietary fats known to cause heart disease, as well as some other health problems. So we really want to avoid using products like that. I get a lot of questions about olive oil. What's the difference between a virgin olive oil, a light olive oil? So this slide's gonna give you some of that information. And it's important to note that when we talk about extra virgin or even virgin, sometimes you'll see it say first cold pressed or cold pressed. That's because we say the first press of the olives is what releases the most concentrated amounts of that olive oil. So you're gonna have more flavor, more color, but you're also gonna have a higher level of antioxidants and nutrients in there. They don't use a, a hot heat when they're extracting olive oil. They uh, will use some heat, like you see here, about 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's what they call cold pressed. Um, that heat does not um, destroy the oil or its nutrients, but it does have a lower smoke point. So cooking beyond 410 degrees Fahrenheit with it is not recommended. You can see the difference between pure or light olive oil. So pure is 90% refined with 10% virgin oil added back. It has more of a neutral olive taste to it versus light that's 98% refined with 2% virgin added back in there. And it has no olive flavor. So if you're using peanut oil or canola oil at home, 
light or pure olive oil would be the perfect replacement to them because you can cook at higher temperatures with them. They don't have the flavor if that's what you're trying to stay away from because you don't like the olive taste um, or you just want a neutral cooking oil. Light means light in color, but not light in calories. Um, there's less antioxidants in pure or light olive oil, but they still have the heart healthy monounsaturated fats. With the Mediterranean diet, they don't use a whole lot of solid fat, so they pretty much use olive oil for everything. I'm sure you've been to a restaurant where they have brought you olive oil with some um, seasonings in there with some fresh baked bread. Or you've maybe seen cooking shows where they take the vegetables or maybe the fresh grilled fish off of the, um, the grill and they take olive oil and they drizzle over um, the meats or the vegetables. That's what we should be doing. We need to have more of these fats in our diet and this is a very healthy, tasty way to do that. I also recommend making your own salad dressing. That may seem daunting to you, but honestly, it's pretty darn easy. All you need to do is take your olive oil and your favorite vinegar. And if you don't like vinegar, you can use lemon juice, fresh lemon juice or that in the bottle, although fresh is gonna have a better flavor. Um, you can mix three parts oil to one part acid um, to make your salad dressing. And from there, you can embellish it with garlic or other kinds of herbs you may like, dried or fresh. Um, and make delicious salad dressings that don't have the salts, the sugars, or the vegetable oils that are so common in the ones that you're buying in your grocery store. The Mediterranean countries consume more of their proteins from beans, seeds, and nuts than they do chicken or fish. They eat these daily, even sometimes multiple times a day. So if you already know you enjoy dried beans, um, then try to put them on the menu a little bit more often. If you don't have dried beans, but you've got canned beans, go ahead and rinse them really well in fresh water and go ahead and start adding some spices to them to fix them and just warm them up. If you want to do the frozen varieties, those are okay too. They don't have a whole lot of sodium added to them. They're pre-cooked. All you'll need to do is warm those up. Hummus is a delicious bean dip. I bet a lot of you have eaten it without even knowing it truly was hummus. For example, if you've been to a party, a Super Bowl party, where they served seven layer bean dip, that's hummus. So hummus is made with a lot of different beans. Traditionally, it's been made with chickpeas, but today in the grocery store, you can find hummus made with black beans. You can find it made with white beans. A whole lot of different flavors of hummus exist as well. So don't be afraid to try it. It's a great protein, can be a great dip for vegetables if you're looking for a healthy snack, as well as um, um, a brand name for you to look for would be Sabra. You can find it in the fresh produce section of your grocery stores. As we talked about earlier, nuts and seeds are consumed pretty often. So long as you're getting them unroasted or unsweetened forms of those nut butters, all these nuts are actually very beneficial for your health. So again, snack on these. Instead of reaching for Lance snack crackers or chips, these are going to be better for your heart health, your body weight, your blood sugars, um, and everything. Here are some serving sizes that you can use as suggestions to help keep you um, eating the right amount of these foods. When it comes to fruit, Whole fruits are encouraged over juices or even canned fruits, but it's okay if you enjoy canned. I'm just going to encourage you to look for it to be found in its own juice or water. You get more fiber though if you stick to fruits that have their peels and of course those that are edible. Um, so when you're eating an apple, you get more fiber than if you're eating applesauce. When you remove the peel, you lose about half of the fiber or more of the dietary fiber. Two to four servings per day is recommended. However, if you're trying to lose some weight, control blood sugars, maybe you need to lower your triglycerides, I'll recommend that you try to stick to about two servings of fruits a day. 
And of course, you can see all of them are okay to eat. Some of them do have a little bit more sugar in them. So the fruits that have the lowest sugar are always are going to be berries, um, avocado, and then apples are good choices here. Lemons and limes um, are going to be ones with the least amount of sugar. When you're eating tropical fruits or really juicy sweet fruits, you know that they have more sugar content. So it's really important to watch your serving size. Here's a slide to give you an example of what counts as a serving for fruit. So now we're gonna talk about fish or seafood. And you can eat shrimp, you can eat crab, you can have um, mussels and clams. We no longer limit dietary cholesterol in foods. So if those are the types of seafood you enjoy, you can certainly start bringing them back. You can do canned, you can do frozen, you can do fresh, but remember fresh in a grocery store means they took it from the freezer and they thawed it out. Um, when you're buying canned, you'll notice that some brands will offer low sodium, some do not. That's okay, you can just rinse it with water and go about fixing it. Um, to lower the sodium content. We recommend to have at least six ounces of fish or seafood a week. So to kind of give you a visual of what that looks like, three ounces is equal to a checkbook, a deck of cards, or a woman's palm of her hand. So that's what three ounces looks like. So if you had six ounces, now you can see how much that really is. The Mediterranean countries consume seafood at least four times a week, so even up to 12 ounces of fish a week, but it doesn't have to be fresh. As I said, it can be canned, it can be frozen, which helps keep the cost down, but do try to make sure it's wild caught. Farm-raised seafood does have controversies um, depending on where it's farmed, which countries. Um, we know that there can be a lot of pollution, a lot of antibiotics used to control diseases, and farm fish aren't eating a natural diet. So again, their nutrient content is different than what we find in wild-caught seafood. So you can see all the examples here of healthy seafood, but it's important to get this omega-3 rich seafood. Omega-3s are the dietary fats that are essential to our human body they're needed for good health, and 80% of Americans are deficient in omega-3s. Our body cannot make them. We need to get them from food, but we don't have a lot of foods that are naturally good sources of omega-3s, especially the types of omega-3s that come from our seafood, which is what the body uses better and absorbs better. So here are some examples. If you're not a fan of salmon, other omega-3 rich seafoods you could be choosing and we recommend you try to at least get three ounces or six ounces a week if, po if possible from an omega-3 rich source. You'll note there's a great resource at the bottom of your slide seafoodwatch.org. I encourage you to visit that website. You can download what we call the Seafood Watch Consumer Guide for the states you live in or maybe the states you're planning to visit to get um, information on what fish is the best to order. If you're concerned about sustainability, you also will be able to get that from this guide. For the Mediterranean countries, as I talked about with dairy for them, a lot of it's fresh. Uh, we don't always have that choice here, but mostly fermented as well. So they do consume quite a bit of yogurt. Um, in their cheese is not pasteurized. We can find unpasteurized cheeses here. A good brand to look for is Organic Valley. This is gonna be the cheese that you find in between the produce section before you go into the, um, sometimes it's around the deli section, but before you hit the meat area of your grocery store, this is where you're gonna be able to find unpasteurized cheeses. Most of the cheese or yogurt they eat is coming from goat's milk or sheep's milk, which is lower in fat content um, overall. 
So if you're familiar with feta cheese, goat cheese, manchego cheese, um, those are great cheeses for you to add some um, flavor to your food. If you're going to choose yogurt, we would recommend you stick with unsweetened. If you're buying the traditional yogurt, like a Dan and blueberry yogurt, there really isn't a whole lot of blueberries in there as there is sugar and flavoring. So that's not the right kind of yogurt that's good for your health. In fact, it can be bad for your health. So buying a plain yogurt and adding blueberries to it or a little bit of honey, cinnamon to sweeten it up uh, provides more health benefits. Greek yogurt is a little thicker, but it has a lot more protein, sometimes twice or three times the protein. So if you're looking for a great protein source for breakfast or maybe for a snack, this is really um, a healthy way to, to go for that. Here's examples of what counts as a serving from this food group. One more thing I'm gonna say about cheese. If you're eating Velveeta or Kraft sliced cheese or cheese spray for crackers, cheese whiz, whatever those things are. That's an example of what we call fake food. American cheese is only 50% milk, and then the other 50% is vegetable oil, salt, preservatives, and so on. So you're not even getting a good source of protein, but it's going to be ingredients that we know make us unhealthy. When it comes to eggs, um, the American Heart Association in 2015 dropped the low cholesterol diet. They no longer limit egg intake. And the Mediterranean countries always consumed whole real eggs. So it's a good thing to eat the whole egg because the yolk is what provides the most valuable nutrients that actually can help lower our risk for chronic health problems like heart disease. The reason is, is that the egg yolks supply us with vitamins A, D, and E, as well as some other vitamins. But vitamins A, D, and E also function as very powerful antioxidants, which help lower inflammation in the body. We know that choline is another mineral that's deficient in the American diet. Choline is linked to lowering um, inflammatory proteins in the body that are associated with heart disease. So if you're eating egg whites, you're not getting all of these valuable nutrients. We do recommend that you choose pasture-raised eggs, organic eggs. Again, this goes back to how is an animal fed and what kind of nutrients it has in its foods. So if a chicken is allowed to eat a normal diet, then it's gonna actually have more of these nutrients as well as omega-3 fats. For poultry, they don't eat that very often like we do here in the United States. They eat maybe three to six ounces a week, but they do, again, use their pasture-raised chickens. So we wanna look for that here to get those same types of nutrients that are found in their meats so we can get some of the same health benefits they experience. Red meat and sweets are considered once in a while foods for the Mediterranean countries. As I indicated earlier, they don't consume a whole lot of added sugar. Their sweets typically can be fruits, or for very special occasions, they may do cakes, but they're not nearly as sweet as they are here in the United States. When they eat red meat, yes, they have beef, pork, lamb, goat. They just do so in smaller amounts. It's pretty expensive over there, so it's not something that most people can have access to. They use it in um, maybe one or two ounces to give something flavor. It's never the main star of a meal. Here in the United States though, again, if you look for pasture-raised grass-fed meats, you'll have a little bit more of those healthier fats we talked about like monounsaturated fats and omega-3s. Also, those meats will have overall less of the uh, fats in them as well as higher protein. If you're looking for a website to get more recipes, menu ideas, or information on the Mediterranean diet, I highly recommend the one that you see here. The one last thing 
before we end is what we see here from an author named Michael Pollan. He says, if it came from a plant, eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. And this goes back to at the very beginning when I, could, when I indicated what a healthy way of eating is, is to eat clean, minimally processed foods, which the Mediterranean diet is a good example of. Well, I hope you've learned something today about the Mediterranean diet, and I wish you all a great day. Thank you.